Joining us now, former House Speaker, Fox News contributor, and author of Trump and the American Future, Newt Gingrich. Newt, great to see you this morning. What do you make of this move at the New York Times? It, given the, the movement by the Times in its opinion, it's expected, is it not? Sure, what, what you're seeing, um, and I wrote a book last year called Trump versus China, which really captures what's going on. Uh, what you're seeing is Maoism. People who are supposed to, in public, confess that they've been guilty, uh, people who have to tow whatever the party line is. Uh, and uh, as we were warned uh, years ago in Orwell's Animal Farm, you know, sometimes that the mob gets to change what it thinks matters. But your job is to trail the mob and do what the mob tells you. And I think when you see an institution as famous and as powerful in the New York Times collapse totally in front of the mob, uh, it tells you what's going on in terms of American elites. They've had three generations of brainwashing. Uh, those young people at the New York Times actually believe all this stuff. Uh, and therefore, they felt it was their moral duty to coerce and crush their editor. You called it Maoism, though, but in this country, we do still have constitutional freedoms. And there, this, there's a difference between a government crackdown and government censorship and what a private company chooses to do, whether it's right or wrong, whether we agree with it or not. Well, I think what you're seeing, though, is a, is a societal Maoism. You're seeing company after company uh, where the leadership is issuing instructions. I just talked to somebody the other day in one of the major networks who has been told that they are not left wing enough, that if they expect their career to survive, they better get in line and memorize the right words. Uh, I th you, you, can, you can draw a distinction, but if the dominant force in your society decides to adopt Maoist strategies of public confession, uh, public group think, uh, these are the key words that matter, you have to, you have to pretend these things make sense. Uh, all of these things are what we've watched now growing for the last five or ten years. Uh, and uh, facts don't exist. When what matters now is what the mob decides. And what you saw was the mob at the New York Times uh, making a decision. And it is literally exact. Remember, Mao created the Cultural Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, not as an instrument of government, but as an instrument of personality. Uh, and uh, ultimately, in fact, the military stepped in because it was so endlessly destructive. So I think this is very, very dangerous. I think it's why the news media is collapsing in terms of public respect. And the psychodrama we just saw at the New York Times is one more example of the collapse of any sense of free speech and its replacement by groupthink. I am, not, I am not often an eternal optimist, but I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Of course, the message from the New York Times is do not come here for diversity of opinion. We're going to get the opinion ultimately that comes out of our newsroom because the opinion page editors aren't allowed to do anything that might offend uh, people who work, you know, who work within the company. That being said, doesn't this give other organizations, other media outlets, even new media outlets that haven't been formed yet, an opportunity? Because don't you believe Americans ultimately want to hear from all sides? That's the optimistic take. I think that's a good optimistic case. But if you end up with a President Biden, a Speaker Pelosi, and a Majority Leader Schumer, you're not going to have very much opportunities. Uh, I think that they would rapidly move to turn the whole country into the equivalent of New York or California and create a one-party state. I um, mean, look look at the level of coercion in the schools now or on the university campuses uh, or, or, for that matter, in Washington, D.C., by the city government. I think what you're seeing is a continuing erosion of what you and I grew up with and a, and a continuing imposition of left-wing values that are not based on facts, they're not based on arguments. They're based on uh, sociological implications of people who are going to isolate you, ostracize you, uh, make sure you're not in, in polite yeah. company. And I, so I'm very concerned. I mean, the New York Times is arguably the most powerful newspaper in the world. Certainly, uh, historically, was the most respected newspaper uh, for at least a half century following on the, the, the London Times. Uh, <clears throat> For them to cave and become this overtly and clearly mm -hmm. a left-wing propaganda device,
I think is very sobering. And the Washington Post is about a half step right. behind them. So you mentioned I, I think it's very hard to imagine how you, when you have ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, and CNN all following the Washington Post and the New York Times, I think the dominant heights uh, are increasingly controlled by the hard left, and they increasingly define what you're yes. allowed to think and say. Uh, and that's why the issue of censorship on social media platforms, in particular Twitter, is, is so disturbing to many. I, I want you mentioned um, Joe Biden, former Secretary of State, four-star General Colin Powell, will veer from party lines in 2020, endorses Joe Biden. His endorsement comes amid reports that two other prominent Republicans, former uh, President George W. Bush and then the senator from Utah, Mitt Romney, will also not back President Trump in November. Your reaction, not a surprise? Well, first of all, Colin Powell, who's a, who I respect a great deal and have worked with for many years, Colin Powell voted for Hillary Clinton. I mean, there's, there's no great shock here. Uh, second, you know, in 1936, Al Smith, who had been the Democratic nominee in 28, ended up you know, splitting from Franklin Roosevelt, said that Roosevelt was too radical. He couldn't be for him. Uh, in 1948, the previous vice president, Henry Wallace, ran as a third party candidate because he couldn't stand Harry Truman. Uh, I think when you have the scale of change that Donald Trump represents, both the personality scale of change, because he's more disruptive than any personality since Andrew Jackson, but also the policy changes, which almost resemble, frankly, uh, Lincoln in 1860 in terms of the scale of the change. The people who fought the wars in the Middle East all of them collectively are offended by Trump on policy grounds. And as people who are organized corporate personalities, they're offended by his aggressive entrepreneurial style uh, and the degree to which uh, he is a disruptive personality. So you're going to see more of this. Uh, and I think the country's going to have to decide. But what I'm surprised by is this is not about Trump. This is about Trump versus Biden, Pelosi, and, and uh, Senator Schumer. And in my mind, from a conservative perspective, the prospect that we're going to end up sabotaging our presidential candidate, guaranteeing we lose the Senate, and guaranteeing Pelosi gets to stay as Speaker, that's a future that I don't quite understand how a Mitt Romney or a George W. Bush, despite their irritation with Trump, I don't quite understand how they can say that's a better future for America. Uh, and I think it's a very frightening future for okay. America. Uh, and I've done several podcasts now on Pelosi's $3 trillion bill, which is filled with radicalism. Right. And, and I think people need to understand what's coming. If they, the three of them win, you're in for a radical change in America Newt. in January, February, and March of 2021. Good to see you, Newt Gingrich. Be well. Good to see Come you. back.